All right, so what's going on, folks? Today we're going to do a kind of a review with just the two students, and it's actually kind of a makeup day, a special class. So, my first question is: Is Paige and Kimilani, you seem to kind of know Chapter Eight, but you kind of don't. And I'm not going to reprove the quadratic equation here. It is, and in all of its glory, here's the quadratic equation proved to you. But I'm going to start from here. And my question is, Paige, I know I talked to Kimilani a little bit earlier, but You've seen this equation before, right? I need you to respond to me quickly here, folks. So make sure both of you guys are talking. So I'm going to ask this to both. Have you both seen this equation? All right. And and by the way, Paige, you don't need to sh uh, chat with me privately. I mean, unless you're embarrassed that Kimilani will tease you. But Kimilani is on a different island, so uh, it's hard to tease people over. But it's up to you. You can chat with me publicly or privately. Um, yes, this one right here, it says x equals negative b plus or minus b squared, or the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is called the quadratic equation. And I'm going to do one of my pet peeves that I don't like doing, but is I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you how to use this equation. How's that? So first we start off with this. Okay, I'm going to go with small and red. Uh, Let's make it maroon. We start off with this. I need some blank space here. Start with a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. Okay, and you've seen an equation like this. These are all the equations. This is the basic form of everything we've solved since January. Since I first met you, this is all we've been doing. Something x squared plus something x plus something equals zero. Okay? Now, the way to solve this thing is you know that the solution looks like this. x equals, and write this down, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that 4ac means 4 times a times c. When we have letters and numbers stacked up right next to each other, you assume it's multiplication in between them. Are we cool? Can you write that down for me? Tell me when you're finished, both of you. Write it down. I want you to write it down. So all we have to do is identify what A, B, and C are. And by the way, A, B, and C don't include an X in them. They're just like the numbers in front of those terms. So if you have an X squared term, the A is the number in front of the X squared term, and so on and so forth. And in order to figure out that solution, you just plug it straight into this equation, and that's it. It's an equation that you plug into. This is called the quadratic equation because it solves these kinds of equations, which are called quadratics. Actually, I think this is called the quadratic formula. Quad formula. Because they solve quadratics. I'll show you how to apply them, and it's very easy. Cool? Paige, I need some answers from you. All right, let's just erase this. I'm on page, I don't even know. I'm on page five of your handout. Let me just kind of erase this right here. There we go. So now let's go back to the pen. All right, so all you do is this. You know that the problem you need to solve, have you seen a problem like this before, Paige? That's my question to you. Have you seen, is that familiar to you? My desktop is all yellow. Kimilani, is my desktop yellow? Oh no, all right, that's gonna be a pain. Um, when, tell me when it, 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 it works. By the way, Paige. Okay, <clears throat> Paige, are we ready?
Okay, good. All right. So have you seen something like this before? What I'm underlining. 3x squared minus 5x plus 1 equals 0. Have you seen have you even have you seen an equation like that? Yes. Okay. And and we know that it's a quadratic because of this x squared term. If that x squared term weren't there, then you would have negative 5x plus 1. That would look like an equation of a line. y equals mx plus b to me. That would describe a line. The plot for it would be a line. But since there's an x squared term, we know that as a parabola. And those plots look like the u-shaped things. Now, how do we solve this? Well, this right here is a special version of our general form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And if we compare these two equations to each other, what does a have to be? It's the number in front of the x squared term. There we go, 3. Friends with tree. All right, what about the b? What does the b have to be? If you compare this b to this one right here. Negative 5, exactly. There we go. And then the C. What does the C have to be? I'm going to leave this question out to Paige. Paige, what does the C have to be? Okay, I'll give you a hint. I'll just kind of... The C doesn't have an X by it. Which of the numbers from this equation right here doesn't have an x? Okay, look at this equation right here, okay? One of these numbers doesn't have an x next to it. This one has an x squared, this one has a five or an x next to it. Which of the numbers don't have an x next to it? Does that make sense to you? Okay, so which one is it? Rhymes with a good friend I met in California. He was from Mexico. His name was Juan. So J U A N. It's the number. There we go. Good. Awesome. Oh, good old Juan. Yeah. No, don't worry. Hey, don't apologize. And I'll, I'll tell you, you want to know a secret? I'm taking a course, and it's a math course. And it's the hardest math course I've ever taken in my life. Hardest math course I've ever taken in my life. In fact, it started off with six students. Half of those students were PhD physicists. And I'm the only one left. There's only one student. It's just me. I feel so stupid in that class. I just feel dumb. Because I'm sitting there in lecture, I'm the only one sitting there. And I'm just like, he's explaining this to me. And he's like, don't you get it? Don't you understand? And I'm like... I'm sorry, and I, I just keep on apologizing and apologizing and apologizing. And I realize, you know what? Don't apologize. You don't understand it. That's fine. That's fine. That's why you're learning it. So please throw it out there. Say, I don't know. I, I'm a little confused so that you can stop me so I can explain it to you. Okay? Because I don't want to be like the teacher that I have where I, you know, I, he makes me feel bad for not knowing something. Anyway. So. We have our a, which is 3, we have our b, which is negative 5, and we have our c, which is 1. Got it? All right, now, all we do is plug it into the quadratic formula. Now, what is the quadratic formula? I make you guys re-say it every time. Oh. Yeah, I'm actually having a class, so this should be it right now. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Yes. Unless you want to just call Connie. All right. The twins were saying like, oh, we came to visit you, but you were busy. And I was like, I'm busy teaching the class that you're supposed to be in. I don't know. Anyway, I got a note from the, anyway, yeah, whatever. All right. Um, here's what the quadratic equation is. It's negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. How did I know that? How did I know that right off the top of my head without looking at it? Well, it's right here, by the way. How did I do that without even like thinking about it? Well, I've memorized it. There's this really funny story 
about how to memorize the quadratic equation. I should tell it to you one day. Do you guys know the story, by the way? You, you've heard the story. All right. Okay. All right. Kimulani says, yes, that's good enough for me. That's not good enough for me. Paige, you want to hear the story? We good. Can I just move on? All it is is it's a story about how to memorize this equation, or at least how to recognize it when you see it. I'm going to need quick answers. I don't have a whole lot of time today. Okay, Diamond says yes. All right, Paige. Do you know the story? Do you want to hear the story? All right, I'll tell it to you in a way because... All right, all right, fine. Okay. There's this dude, okay? He's a negative guy. He's like a frowny face dude. And he's like... Mm. And, and he, he was invited to go to this radical party, but he was unsure of whether or not he wanted to go. At the party, he ended up going, by the way. At the party, he was a square. He was like, kind of like a, a square dude, where he was like real uptight. Because he's a negative guy. What can you say? And so, because he was a square, he missed out on talking to these four awesome chicks. Three of which are in this class right now. I'm not used to calling my students chicks, so, I mean, yeah. That whole party was over at 2 a.m. That helps me memorize the quadratic equation. Come on in because it's gonna be, I'm going to be talking, talking, talking. You guys probably need to uh, see if you guys get two chairs in here because they're taking a the test out there. So you, okay. the way I memorize this is negative boy, unsure, radical party, dude was a square, missed out on four awesome chicks, all over at 2 a.m. That's the story, Paige. Okay, so all I do is I take the numbers that I gathered here, B, A, and C, and I plug them straight into the quadratic equation. You guys think you guys can fit those two big chairs behind me while I, uh, while I teach? Yeah. All right. Oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. I gotta close the door. Sorry, I got dropped out of the the uh, audio conference. All right, so all you do is you take these numbers and you plug them straight into here. So if I plug in negative b into a, that would be negative, and b is negative five. Plus or minus the square root. It's gonna be tough. All right, here, we'll do this. Come on in. Close the door. Put the chair down. Ridiculous, huh? Small little room. <coughs> Can't even fit two people inside. Three people inside here. Anyway, um, Paige, can you still hear me? Is the is the audio coming through still? All right. Can you hear me? Can you hear my voice? Can you hear me? All right. Anyway, um, you plug in your numbers into the quadratic equation. So you have negative negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared. What is negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Okay. Minus 4 times A times C. So I like to just do that in my head. 4 times 3, 12. 12 times 1, 12. 12, still 12, we cool? And divide that by 2a, and a is 3, so it's just 6. So that negative negative 5 is really just positive 5, plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 12 is 13. All over 6, that is your answer, my friend. That's really two different answers. It's really 5 plus the square root of 13 and 5 minus the square root of 13, and then you divide both of those by 6. That's your two different answers. Now, what those two answers represent is where does this thing cross the x-axis? Apparently, it crosses at 5 plus or minus the square root of 13. What is the square root of 13? Do you guys know? What's the square root of 9? Here's the way I'm going to figure it out. What's the square root of 9? 3. What's the square root of 16? 4. 
So the square root of 13, since 13 is between 9 and 16, then the square root of 13 must be between 3 and 4, right? Does that make sense to you? So I would say, I don't know, let's say 3 and a half, or 3.4, let's say that. Wait, let me think. Uh, I would say that it's 3.6. I think it's closer to 4 than it is to 3. So, 3.6. So you have 5 plus 3.6 divided by 6, and then 5 minus 3.6 divided by 6. Does that kind of make sense? Here, let me, let me show you what we're solving here for is 3x squared minus 5x plus 1. Let's go over to Desmos and see what they have in store for us. I apologize. I'm not sick, you guys. I've just got allergies for some reason. Why do I have to type in a Apache to use the internet? E S S E G R A. I'm going to delete everything on this computer and restart it. By the way, we're not a three headed dragon. The boys just came in here. Um, all right, let's see. It was 3x squared minus 5x plus 1. And look where it crosses. It crosses at 2 point, or 0.232 and 1.434. Is that our answers? I don't know. What is 5? Actually, you know what? What is the square root? Of 13. I'm curious to know what that is. 3.6! Dude, look at that guess. It's awesome. It's because I'm awesome. Alright, and then you go 5 plus that. I'm sorry. Divide by 6. And your one of your answers is 1.434. Hey, wasn't that one of our answers? 1.434? And then we'll do 5 minus that. 0.232. That was the other answer, wasn't it? 0.232. So what you're doing when you solve the quadratic equations is you're figuring out where the dang thing crosses the x-axis. Does that make sense to you? So, sometimes... All right, sometimes you'll get equations that you don't need to use the quadratic equation for. Sometimes you'll get things that, like, you'll have problems that you could solve without using the quadratic equation. And that would have been a lot nicer to do it, you know, using factoring or whatever. Like, I'll give you one more example, and I think that after that I'm going to show you basically how to use this thing to its full extent, but to be honest with you, you already know all of these tools. The rest of quad eight, after you understand the quadratic equation, the rest of quad eight is really just kind of like saying, hey, remember that time when we used this technique and used that technique? And let me show you. Let me see if I can make up a problem off the top of my head and see if I can get, get you to understand one. All right, I'm going to make up a problem. So more of this. Let's go x squared. I want you to write this down, by the way, for those of you online. x squared. Um, wait, <laughs> sorry, minus 12x plus, okay, wait, let me think, wait, hold on, give me a second, I'm trying to think of how to write this down, I'm going to make x squared minus 12, and then make this a, Uh, plus three? No, plus. <coughs> okay, wait. Plus four. All right. X squared plus four X minus 12. We good? I think that would be good. Let me think. It's hard to think of these things in your head. Because you got to choose a problem in your head that kind of works out in the end. You'll see what I mean. All right. <clears throat> well, let's try to solve this one. Please identify for me. 
What is A, B, and C? And I only want Kimilani and Paige to answer this. I feel like Diamond. I feel like you're twins. You guys know what I'm. You guys know what A, B, and C are, right? All right. And this is for you guys, Kimilani, and Diamond. Or no, Diamond. Paige. What is A, B, and C of this equation right here? Oh, Kimilani gave me all of them. A is one, B is four, and C is negative twelve. Do you agree with that, Paige? Because she could be absolutely wrong. Okay, Paige agrees with that. And you're absolutely correct. Okay, next one. Um, A is this, B is that, C is that. You plug that into your quadratic equation, which I always like to write down, just so I can memorize it. By the way, can you recite it out for me? Quadratic equation. Negative B plus or minus the square root of? Come on, dudes. B. B what? Plus 4AC. No, no. So, uh, first, squared. it's B squared, and it's minus 4AC. Dude didn't get to talk to four awesome chicks. He missed out on four awesome chicks, which is a bummer. All right. Put that all over 2A. Are we cool? All right. So if B is 4, so that would be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared. 4 squared is what? What is 4 squared? 16. 16. All right. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 12. I'll just write that down. <coughs> and we're cool with how I put, if I put the parentheses in there, that means times, right? You guys know that? <coughs> I'll divide it by 8. Oh, no, 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 not 8. Sorry. 2a, which is 2. Because a is 1. We cool? Alright. This stuff right here. What is negative 4 times 1 times negative 12? At least tell me the sign. What's the sign of that? Positive. Because that negative in front of the 4 cancels out with that negative in front of the 12. So let me see. I got negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus. 16 plus, uh, what is it, 48? All over 2. So negative 4 plus or minus the square root of... What's 16 plus 48? I don't know how to do that off my head. 54? 64. No, no, it was close. It was, it was close. It was good. It was a good try. Hey, what's the square root of 64? 8. 8. Ooh, awesome. Awesome. This, this square root kind of... Ends up giving us a nice number. So, the answer is x equals this, but we can evaluate both of those. What is, I'm sorry, my phone's ringing. Let me call them back. Hi. I'm so sorry. I'm actually in class. Can I call you back right after class? I'll be finished in about... Uh, 40 minutes. Alright, I'll call you back right after. Okay, love you. Goodbye. Alright, negative 4 plus 8. So we're going to, we, we know that these are two answers. Let's evaluate it. Let's figure out what they are. So negative 4 plus 8 is what? Negative 4 plus 8 is 4. Divide that by 2 and you get 2. So one of our answers is 2. The other answer is Negative 4 minus 8. Negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12. Divide that by 2 and you get negative 6. So our two answers is that positive 2 and negative 6. Where does this thing cross the x-axis? Positive 2 and negative 6. Let's check out Desmos and see if that they agree. So that was x squared. What was it? It was minus? Oh, plus 4x minus 12. Okay. Plus 4x minus 12. Zoom out. Answer right. 
Look at that. It crosses that at 2 and negative 6. Are we cool? Paige, do you understand the quadratic equation? Kimilani, do you appreciate the power of the quadratic equation? All right. Now, here's the deal. is Since this came out to be really nice numbers and pretty numbers, you realize that actually we could have gone back and solved it in a much easier way. I'm just letting you guys know. You guys are like, why would he do that to us if he could solve this in a much easier way? Like, I'll, let me show you, okay? I'll just show it to you. Okay, I started off with this. x squared plus 4x minus 12. I can actually factor that. x, x. What are two numbers that multiply out to 12? Oops, what happened to my computer screen? I don't know. All right. What are two numbers that multiply out to be the number 12 and you can mess with to get 4? Two and six, right? And the six would have to be positive and the two would have to be negative because you'll have positive six plus negative two and that would give you positive four. We cool with that? That's equal to zero, by the way. All of this is equal to zero. Hey, we can solve that to be x equals two and x equals negative six. Like, you, wait, wait. So you're telling me that I'm, I'm, I'm voicing your thoughts in your head right now. What's going through your head? You're telling me that you went through this entire solution like this when all I had to do was write down those three orange lines? Right? And you feel like you want to punch me. And I'm lucky because I'm on the other side of the screen and you can't punch me. I mean, they can punch me. I'll punch them back. But I mean, you know, you see what I mean? Like, what, what the hey, Mr. Dalde? Why would I do it this complicated way if I could have done it this easy way? And I'll tell you this. Because I, I taught you this easy way earlier. I taught you how to do that. Right? That's called factory. We've done that. We've done that many times. Here's the deal. You can only do factoring if the numbers that they land on is really nice. You couldn't have factored this. The other problem we did. There's no way you could have factored that. But the quadratic equation still works. The quadratic equation still works on something that can be factored, and it can also work on something that can't be factored. That's why I call it my bazooka, because it's cumbersome. It takes a long time to get out and set up and all that kind of stuff, but it always works, right? You want to kill someone, you can either use, I mean, I guess you could kill someone with a, like a spear, or you could use a bazooka. Bazooka is way more, like way less cost effective, and it's also a lot messier, but it will work. You see what I mean? All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I don't have time to kind of think of all different kinds of scenarios for you. So I'm just going to stick with this equation. This is what the equation looks like in what we call standard form, my friends. Okay? It's where you have x squared plus 4x, or you know what I mean? You have everything on the left side, and it will have a number x squared plus a number x plus a number. Okay. From this, let's see. This gives us our x intercepts. It tells us that the graph crosses the x axis at 2 and negative 6. We cool with that? Cumulati? Page? We good? All right. And how do we get that x intercept? Well, if you want to get the x intercepts, you set. You guys, what what's what is it? You set y equal to zero. There we go, Ted. I didn't even know you were in the class. That's awesome. You came in. Yes, exactly. If you want to get the x intercept, you set y equal to zero. If you want to get the y intercept, you set x equal to zero. And if we set x equal to zero in this equation up here, you'll have zero plus zero minus twelve. 
So what is your y-intercept? Negative 12. So if we were to graph this, I don't have any room at this point. If we were to graph this, our graph would be, we know it crosses at, at 2, negative 6, and it goes down at 12. So here's negative 12. I know that this part right here is 2. And I know that this part right here is negative 6. I have a question for you. How can I find the vertex using this information? Where is the vertex? Is it right here? Is it right here? No. How can I find the vertex? What does this graph look like? Is it a happy parabola or is it a sad parabola? Happy. It's a happy. It feels like a room without a roof. So you got yourself a happy parabola. It crosses at 12. So where's the vertex at? It's right down here. How do we find that? All right, here we go. Diamond saying, you take the x-intercepts and average them. What would that give us? You're telling me you find the middle point between 2 and negative 6? That's like right about here. What would that tell us? That would tell us where the x-coordinate of the vertex is. Does that make sense? Because we know that the vertex occurs, because we know that a parabola is a symmetric shape, right? We know that there's a middle to this parabola, and then it's symmetric about those two sides. So we know that if it crosses at 2 and negative 6, then the middle of that problem would be in the middle of those two intersection points. Does that make sense? And how do you find the intersection points? Well, you can kind of think of it like this. I don't know. I kind of think of it graphically where I just say, well, what number is an even distance from negative 6 as it is from positive 2? Can you see that? Negative 2. Why? How far is negative 2 from negative 6? You have to move 4 to the left, right? How far is positive 2 from negative 2? You have to move 4 to the right. So there's 4 spaces in here and 4 spaces over here. So this is negative 2 over here. Does that kind of make sense to you guys graphically? I mean, if you want to do it mathematically, which is probably the better way of doing it, you would add negative 6 plus 2 divided by 2. That's how you average something. You take the two things, you add them up together, and you divide it by the same amount of something bad. <laughs> negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Divided by 2 is negative 2, and that's how you get that x-axis right there, that x-intercept. That tells you the x-coordinate of the vertex. Well, if our original equation was y equals this, x squared plus 4x minus 12, it's not equal to zero. It's only equal to zero when we set the y equal to zero. But usually it's just y equals x squared minus, or plus 4x minus 12. What you do is you plug that negative 2, that x coordinate, into here, and then you can calculate out what y is. So you have y equals x squared plus 4x minus 12. If I plug in negative 2, what is negative 2 squared is positive 4, right? right, minus 8 minus 12. What's 4 minus 8 minus 12? Mm -mm. That's negative 16. 16. There we go. So look, if you're given a problem, it, it doesn't even need to be a nicely factored one, although it really helps. If you want to find the x-intercepts, how would you go about doing it? You want to find the x-intercepts? What do you do, boys? Y zero. You set y equal to zero. And when you set y equal to zero, that gives you an opportunity to apply the quadratic formula. The negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay? That quadratic formula will give you the x-coordinates or the x-intercepts. That's where the graph crosses the x-axis. 
If you wanted to find the y-intercept, that, that was easy to find. All you got to do is just plug in x equals 0 into your equation, and you'll get, oh, negative 12. y equals negative 12. We're good there. If you want to find where the vertex is, and all you know is the quadratic equation, then what I would do is I would figure out where the x coordinate of the vertex is by averaging the two intercepts. Am I losing you guys here? Because I'm starting to go off, not on a tangent, but I'm basically wrapping up all of what the rest of quad 8 is in, in one problem. Are we good so far? Do you guys understand what I'm talking about? And this is for really Kimilani and, and Paige, because I know that... All right, good? All right. All right, good. All right, fine. <coughs> that x-coordinate, if you can find the average between the two x-intercepts, that will give you the x-coordinate of the vertex. Because you look, the vertex is this point right here. And the x-coordinate is basically, it tells you where this thing lies on. All you got to do is you plug that negative 2 back into your original equation and you figure out what it is. So look, it crosses that negative 6 and positive 2. We figured out, that out using the quadratic equation. It crosses at negative 12, it, the y-intercept at negative 12. We figured that out by looking at the standard form and realizing that that's pretty much the only, you know, good information standard form can give us. Are you guys playing footsie? All right, I'm just making sure. The last one is we figured out where the vertex is by finding the average of the x-intercepts and figuring out that the x-coordinate is negative 2. Then we plug that negative 2 into our original equation, and we got negative 16. So look, we got all of the relevant points of a parabola. If you were given those four points and you can't graph a parabola, you've got other problems, buddy. So the, 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 the game here is to graph a parabola, to figure out what this parabola looks like by just looking at an equation. The equation that we're given is whatever the equation of the parabola is. And without using a graphing calculator or Desmos.com or whatever, I'm only using Desmos to verify what, we've, what, we, what we already know. But we can figure out all the information based off of just using the quad, applying the quadratic equation. Is that cool? Do you see the power in this thing? The power. I only got four minutes left before you guys got to go to your participation in democracy class, so I need to hurry up. All right. So I believe, to be honest with you, I, I don't think that there's anything else in this homework that you can't do. By the way, on page, I don't know, what is it? Page 14, problem number three, there was a funky thing that happened. You guys can skip it if you want, or you guys can go over. I mean, I talked about that in WebEx. I don't think I gave you any stations, but you guys should be able to do all of those stations. Let's see what they're asking you to do at the end of the homework. Is solve this problem using the quadratic equation. Oh, okay. Well, in order to use the quadratic equation, it has to look like this. It has to have an equal, equal zero on the right-hand side. So you can't solve this using the quadratic equation yet. What you should do is you should, subtract, you should subtract 7 from both sides, making the right-hand side equal to 0, and you'll have 3x squared minus 6x minus 3. I'm not even going to, like, I'm, I'm not even going to ask you. I'm just going to tell you A, B, and C. A is 3, B is negative 6, C is negative 3. Cool? What else are they asking you to do? Uh, let's go to the very end. Okay, find the location of the vertex for each of these quantities. Well, if it's given to you in vertex form, that's really nice. Finding the vertex is pretty simple. My, my screen just went crazy again. I don't know what the deal with that is. If you're given the equation in vertex form, that's really nice. But if you're given it to you like this, well, finding the vertex, that's a little bit trickier. What you would probably do is apply the quadratic equation, right? 
then when you get the quadratic equation, that will give you the x-intercepts. And you can find the, the x-coordinate of your vertex by doing what to the x-intercepts. Diamond already knows, so I want somebody else to answer this. What can, how do you find the x-coordinate of the vertex only using oh. the intercepts? Not the median, it's the mean, the mean right? You, you add the two together and you divide by two and you get to the number. That will give you your x-coordinate of your vertex. Then once you have that, you plug that x-coordinate into here, replace x with, those num with whatever number you get. And that will give you your y-coordinate and that will be where your vertex is. We cool? And, and actually, I think that that technique of like if I gave you two of the x-intercepts and I asked you to find the vertex, that was what we covered in January. That's what we covered in like quad zero or quad one, I think, to be honest with you. So all we're doing for the rest of quad eight is after we showed you the quadratic equation, we're just asking you to like do stuff to it. Anyway. It's 10.15. Bernice just got in here and she's like, all right, Bernice, in here, get out of here. Because I think all of you guys have participation in, in democracy. Do you guys have that? No. All right, you guys maybe not. Bernice, do you have participation in democracy? All right. So all of you who have participation in democracy, you guys better get out of here and go into participation in democracy. That includes Kimilani. Diamond, Ted, uh, Paige, are you participa participating in democracy? All right. Bernice, I started class at 9.30, and I was only going to go to 10.15. I was actually going to go to 11, but I'm only going to go to 10.15 because, um, what you call it, has per participation in democracy, Mr. Spurgett. But if you are, do you have participation in democracy? Are you in that class? Yes. Okay, then you should probably be there. I'll go let her know that, I'll go let Mr. Spurgett know that I've kicked all of you guys out and put you in the, that class right now. I'll be right back. Sorry, excuse me. Watch your knees, you guys. I'll be right back. Oh, I can't get him out. Um, who's in participation in democracy? Is there anyone here that's still in that class? That's in that class? All right. Um, Mr. Sperg is having trouble getting into WebEx right now. I'll tell you what, why don't I do this then? Since I'm done uh, on Quad 8 and I've talked about everything there is. So what I was planning on doing today was re-going over quad, or I was planning on going over quad nine, because that's what I was supposed to do on Friday. But um, I got a call from a few people and said, I'm still confused on quad eight. And so I re-went over quad eight. Why don't I take the last till 11 o'clock and finish off quad nine since the boys are here anyway? You guys can't make it to WebEx on Wednesday, Friday, anyway. I'll just start it. I'll just start problems on that. Are we cool with that? Can you guys hang with me till then? All right. But to be fair, I thought I was going to end up at, end at ten fifteen, and I told my wife I would call her. And I don't like lying to my wife, so do you mind if I make a phone call and then start Quad Nine? I know. Sorry. I'm sorry. 
And I, by the way, I don't know what happened to the archive. Oh no, it's still there. All right, good. All right, well, let's archive this phone conversation. Okay, so let me let me renew this thing. Or make a new one. I'm not gonna save any changes to that one. beautiful this is Tosh I promised I would give you a call back at uh, well now and I'm doing so but um my class actually finishes at 11 o'clock and so I'll call you back right after I'm done with class I promise anyway I'll talk to you later um, and then if it's emergency just give me a call I'll answer and I'll pick up uh, and you can let me know what's going on all right talk to you later love you bye <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Sorry. <coughs> oh, okay. All right. What are they asking us to do? <laughs> All right. A symbol matching game. Ooh, this is fun. Ooh, I'm cute. All right. So apparently, on the left side, there's the vertex form, and the right side, there's a standard form. <laughs> ah, excuse me. Sorry. All right, why don't, we t why don't we do this? For number 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, why don't you guys just read off for me, what are the y-intercepts? Hmm? Negative six, good. Next person. 16. 16, good. Diamond. For number 13. Three, perfect. Page. What is the y-intercept for that problem? If you don't know, say IDK, and then some of the, one of these guys who obviously do know will explain to you. Okay. Negative five. You said the answer. You got to explain it, man. It's basically the last number. To find the y-intercept, you set what? X zero. You set x equals 0. If I plug in x equals 0 here and x equals 0 there, all I'm left with is what? Is the negative 5. There you go. All right, Paige, you get another one. What is the y-intercept of this? Seven. Perfect. Good. You get it then. All right. Looking at the vertex form, what is the very what is useful about the vertex form? What does it tell you? It tells you where the y intercept. No, it does not tell you where the y intercept form is. It's called the vertex it tells form. You where the vertex is. It tells you where the vertex is. It's called the vertex form. We, we cool? Now the vertex form will tell you the vertex. Where is the vertex on this guy right here? <coughs> two. two. Nope, Diamond's got it. It's at negative two, comma two. Or negative one, comma two. Remember, the vertex is a point. It has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. You need two of those coordinates to describe that one point. You need to tell me where it is. Horizontally, and then where it is vertically. The horizontal is w is negative one, even though you don't see a negative one in there. Remember, what does that positive two do to that problem? It makes it move up. It makes it move up two units. What does that positive one in there do? It makes it move to the left. You would think that it makes it move to the right. 
But it actually makes it move to the left because left and right, apparently with math, is a little backwards. I don't know why. Anyway, it moves into the left one unit. So you know that the vertex is going to be one unit. It's going to start at zero, zero, but it's going to be one unit shifted to the left and two units moved up. Are we cool with that? Yeah. What is the, where is the vertex on this guy right here then? Come on, somebody else. Three comma zero. And by somebody else, I meant somebody else besides Diamond. All right, tell me, where's the vertex on this guy right here? Number 23. Negative 2, 4. Negative 2, 4, exactly. What did that 3 do, by the way? It makes it skinnier, but did it change where the vertex is? No. No, it did not. It just made it skinnier. So you have a skinnier <coughs> problem, or maybe a stretched vertically parabola. You get it? Where is the vertex on this guy right here? And you guys are out. Are Diamond. Positive three, three, negative one. Answer is wrong. What? George? Do? George? George. One, three. This gives you the x coordinate, and you always tell me the x first. This gives you the y coordinate, and you tell me the y second. You said, said three, no, negative one. No, I said one. negative. I said negative. I said positive one. No, you said three. You said. All right, all right. No, I heard you right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You did say that. Good job. Good job. By the way. All right. <laughs> Paige, can you give me what the vertex is of this guy right here? Now, he had like five good examples for you, or four good examples. So I just, if you IDK, feel free to say that, and no one's going to laugh at you. And if they do, I'll punch them. So do you know where the vertex is? Can you tell me? If not, IDK, and that's fine. All right. What it is, is you look at this You look at this thing, and, and what you want to do is you want to ask yourself, what does this do to the parabola? This guy will move the parabola up one space. This negative 2 in here will move it to the right two spaces. So your vertex is 2 because you talk, tell me about the right and left version first. So it's to the right, positive 2, and up 1. So it's 2, comma 1. That's where the vertex is. If you want me to graph it, I can do a Desmos on that one. It was, what was it? It was x minus 2 squared. x minus 2 squared plus 1, right? <coughs> Look, it's a regular parabola. Because a regular parabola is x squared. It's a regular parabola. The difference is I moved it to the right two units and up one. That negative two actually moves it to the right instead of the left. Although you would have thought that it moves it to the left. Does that make sense to you, Paige? Okay, good. Then, here's my question. What is the vertex of this guy right here? Number 27. Close, very close. 2 comma 11. It's not positive 2. Negative 2. It's negative 2. It's the opposite of what's inside there. Because remember, when there was a negative two inside there, it moved it to the right two. But there's a positive two inside here, and it moves it to the left two. I think this is all from lesson one, quad one. Okay? Now, that wasn't the game of this exercise. This was just review. What, how do you get from, because apparently uh, this is a matching game, and you got to match uh, this one on the left side to the one on the right side. What is it in vertex form and an equivalent in, in standard form? I think the way I would do it is I would just multiply out this vertex form and then 
figure out which one matches. You, you see what I mean? Like, let's choose one. Let's try, let's do the, the, the 23. It was uh, 3x plus 2 squared plus 4. I would just multiply this out. Give me a second. I, I can't move my legs. All right. x plus 2 squared. So that's 3 times x squared plus 4x plus 4. Plus four. Do you guys understand what I did there? I bet you some of you didn't. Please ask me to explain it if you don't understand what I did. Come on, do you understand what I did? Yes or no? No. All right, fine. See this x plus two squared, by the way? x plus 2 squared, that's x plus 2 times x plus 2. You FOIL that. First times the first is x squared, right? Outer is plus 2x. And last, or inners is plus 2x. And last is plus 4. Um, Page... You can, you can if you want. You can go to participation in democracy. All right. By the way, you see how this now is x squared plus four x plus four? Because I just yes. combined the two x and the two x. So that's what I have here. Three times x squared plus four x plus four plus four. I distribute in that three, and I get. 3x squared plus 12x plus 12 plus 4. I still have that plus 4 on the outside, so I just distributed that 3 into there. And I have 3x squared plus 12x plus 16. So apparently, this is the same as 3x squared plus 12x plus 16. And that would be, I would draw a line between here and 23 is the same as 12. <laughs> uh, I have these bad allergies. I don't know what's going on. Are we cool with that, Diamond? Are we cool with that, boys? Cool. All right. So you guys understand how to translate between vertex and standard form? I mean, I think that would be the easiest way. One way you could do is if you gave me a standard form, I could turn it into vertex form for you. It would be a little bit more complicated. You would have to use this process called complete the square. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but I'm just, I'm just saying. Oh, cool. You can have matching descriptions. We're going to play this matching game. I think that would be fun. Which, which function is the skinniest parabola? Oh, I got a question. Which one of these functions is the skinniest of the all the parabolas? Look at it. Which one of these is the skinniest? Well, which is the same as 23, right? We figured that out. How? How can you tell? Because the number in front of the x squared term is the biggest one. Yep, I agree. That would be a fun game to play. All right. So they're talking about vertex form and standard form. Oh, okay, good, good, good. This is a good one. Um, let's try this one. Tell me about this graph right here. Is this a happy graph, this one right here? Is this a happy graph or a sad graph? happy 
And what is the, uh, what am I doing to this parabola? To oh. the right, up two to the right, one. up one. Agreed. Agreed with you and agree with you. Two to the right, Three. up one. If I were to graph that for you, it would look something like this, right? Two to the right, up one, happy graph, something like that. Everyone agree? <laughs> Why do you laugh? That's totally it. Yes, it is. All right. Here's my question oh. for you. Where does this thing cross the zero or the x-axis? It does not. It doesn't. That's interesting. I'll tell you what. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, take this graph, x minus 2 squared plus 1, and I'm going to turn it into the standard form. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply this out. Tell me what I should write down. X minus 4. It's actually x squared minus 4x plus 4. You guys know how I did that in my head? Yes. No, you don't. No, yes, I do. Really? Yep. You do? Oh, Seriously? I do. All right. Explain. All right, try this then x minus 3 squared. x squared. x squared. Um, positive. Minus 6x. Minus 6x. Plus 9. I mean, if you kind of look at it like this, this is almost like the complete the square trick. We know that this negative 6 over here is twice what this is right here. And we know that this number out here is the square of that. Anyway, uh, if you don't know, if you don't know how to do this trick, just write it down like this. Then foil it, okay? All I'm doing is I'm foiling it in my head real quick. You guys are like, wow, that's pretty cool. And you guys are thinking, no, nah, that's not really that cool. This is all it is, just a nerd. That's a, that's a cool trick for nerds. Anyway, um, x squared minus 4x plus 5. That's our, this, that's what the equivalent of this in standard form is. Are we cool? How did I get the 5? 4 plus 1 is 5. If I were to use the quadratic equation on this, let's try it. What is A, B, and C? A is 1, one negative 4, negative four five. 5. So the quadratic equation is negative B, so that would be positive 4, plus or minus the square root of 16, because that's negative 4 squared, right? Yeah. Minus, four minus 4 times, times, a times 1 times 5, so that would be minus 20 over 2, right? So that would be 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2. What's the problem? Immediately, I'm looking at this and I'm like, there is a big problem here. Can't have a negative square root. Can't have a negative square root. Since you can't have a negative square root, you immediately know that there is no answer that is real in this case. And therefore, so, it does not touch. therefore, it does not touch the x-axis, which we've already concluded. You know what I mean? But the point is, is if I give this to you in vertex form, you can kind of see it immediately. Oh, that doesn't touch the x-axis. But if I gave it to you in standard form, and you were to solve it out, and you'd be like, "What the heck? What is the square root of negative four? What times itself to give me a negative number?" There is no number that times itself will give me a negative. So therefore, it must not cross at the x-axis. You see what I mean? The quadratic equation is saying, it's impossible. And then when you look at the graph, you say, oh, I see what they're saying. It's impossible. Yes, Diamond, negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4, I agree. But that's not a number times itself. That's a number times its negative.
So that's what the rest of this game is all about. Are we cool with that? Let's try the next one, because it looks nice. X squared minus 6x plus 9. You know what I'm going to want to do? I wanna, I'm want i going to try factoring this. I want to figure out what the x-intercepts are by factoring this. Can we do that? X, X. <coughs> minus 3 and minus 3. You guys agree? I agree. That equals zero. So all it's telling us that x equals three. Well, this one tells us that x equals three. This one also tells us that x equals three. So therefore, my conclusion is x must equal three. How do you think that graph's gonna look? Is it happy or sad? Happy. Where's the x-intercept? three but there's only one x-intercept what's the deal with that oh, it's just the ah the vertex touches right there so it's a problem that just kind of kisses the x-intercept x-axis we cool all right um i don't know what happened to my computer again I don't know why the screen goes bad every so often. Oh, I got a headache from sniffling so much. This is an interesting day. All right. So are we cool with that? You guys are good with this warm-up kind of deal? It's not even a warm-up per se. It's kind of a... Like, it's kind of a... Um... Okay, this is the homework. Ooh, we're doing homework. You guys want to do homework? <coughs> X plus 3 squared minus 5. <coughs> Tell me, what does that graph look like? Is it happy or sad? X plus 3 squared minus 5. Is it happy or sad? Happy. happy. And what are you doing to it? You're moving it to... How are you moving it? Moving it. You're moving it to the... Five. You're moving Left down three. five. Left three. Left three. So can you guys think of it? It's a happy parabola. Move left three, down five. Is it going to have x intercepts? Yes. You think so? Yes. Okay. So here's what I would do. I think it will have x intercepts as well because if I moved it to left three, down five. Yes, I totally agree. If it were up 5, it wouldn't have x-intercepts. But since it's down 5, I think it will have x-intercepts. What are those x-intercepts? Well, we can figure it out this way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vertex form right here, and I'm going to multiply it out. x plus 3 squared minus 5. All right, you get another shot. What is x plus 3 squared? x squared. x squared. Plus 6x. 6x. Wow. Plus 9. Plus 9, and you still got that minus 5 out there. So this is x squared plus 6x plus 4. Plug that into your quadratic equation, you end up getting negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 times 1 times 4, which is 16. All over two. Phone call. Hello. Hey, beautiful. How's it going? I did. Did you get my message? I told you. I told you that um, my class will finish at eleven o'clock. I called you back because I told you I would call you back. But I will call you at eleven, and if it's an emergency, you can totally call me, and I'll pick up. Um, so I'm. I'm so sorry, but I. I have class till eleven. 
I thought it was going to finish at 10.15, but then some students stuck around. So, 11 o'clock, I'll give you a call. Okay, love, love, love you. Okay, bye. All right, fine, sorry. Negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 16 is 20, yeah? So what is my answer? Well, it's whatever negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 20 is. Divided by 2, by the way. What's the square root of 20? I don't know. Can I reduce 20? Can I reduce that square root? Do you guys remember how to reduce square roots? Yes, very good. So 20 is really the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. The square root of 4 is 2. So I have negative 6 plus or minus 2 square root 5 over 2. Yeah? And since... Wait. No, it passed. All right. Since um, I can divide 2 into everything, I have negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. What is the square root of 5? Boy, I don't know. What's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of 9? <clears throat> 3. So the answer's got to be between 2 and 3, right? Because the square root of 5 is between 4 and 9. 2. Do you guys think that it's closer to 2 or closer to 3? Closer to 2. Closer to 2. I would say, I don't know, what's your guess? 2 point something. 2.23? 2. 2. Yeah. What do you think? Dude, how'd you guys know? It's 2.24, by the way. How'd you know? <coughs> That's awesome. It's because Diamond put it up there? Yes. She has a calculator. Yeah, Diamond, you rounded it wrong. It's 2.24, my friend. If you're only going to give me two sig three sig figs, then you got to report it correctly. Anyway, so really it's negative 3 plus or minus 2.24. So my answer is going to be at, what is negative 3 plus 2.24? Whatever that is. What is negative 3 minus 2.24? It's negative 5.24. So if I were to graph that sucker, and that was x squared. What was the, gra what was the, the equation? It was, it was, which one? This one right here? Uh, yeah. yeah. X plus 3 squared minus 5. X <coughs> plus 3 squared minus 5. Then the thing crosses at negative 5.24 or 236. And negative point seven six four. Are we cool? And I would have and I argued with you and said that this vertex form is the same as this standard form, that x squared plus six x plus nine. No. Plus four. Sorry. It's plus nine minus five, so plus four. And look, it's the same same graph. Red graph and the blue graph made a purple graph. We cool? So really all this, I think all this entire packet is about is making you see that sometimes, sometimes the parabola will have no solution. And that no solution happens specifically when there's a what, what's the problem we've been running into? When we have a negative square root. When we have a negative square root, that's where your problem arises. And therefore, you know that that parabola probably doesn't cross the x-axis. Does that make sense? Yeah. And to be honest with you, what we do for that is, if, if you're telling me that the only thing that we're really worried about here in terms of not having a solution, is this thing that is uh, 
is this thing that's inside the square root? That would be the b squared minus 4ac. Then wouldn't this thing kind of be very important? Because if that's a negative number, then the answer is there is no answer. Right? So that's the other part we have to be taken a look at it. And, and we've given it a name. It's so important that we've given it a name. We call it the, the discriminant. I think that's how you spell it. B squared minus 4ac. So the discriminant is really just the stuff inside of that square root. And whether if the discriminant is positive, then we know that the answer has what? The answer, then there is an answer. If the discriminant is negative, that's the stuff inside the square root is negative, then we know that there is... No, the x-axis. No, there, that was, we know, then we know it doesn't cross the x-axis. So, I mean, all you got to do is look at the discriminant. So, if you look at this number right here, like for, for this first problem, g of x equals x squared minus, six, minus x minus 6. Um, what's the... What's the b... You tell me, is this going to have answers, or is this not going to have any answers? The first one. Is that going to have an answer, or two answers, or is it going to have no answer, or, you know, no solution? Identify what is A, B, and C. And figure out what this stuff in the square root is. Evan says two answers. I'll, I'll go through exactly what she's she's thinking. A, B, and C are what? You guys can tell me that. One, one, six. one negative one, six, or negative six. The stuff inside the square root is really the only thing I'm concerned about. So that negative one squared is positive one, right? Minus four AC, and that will actually make it minus four times negative six, which is positive 24. Are we cool? And because of that, that uh, 1 plus 24 is a positive number, so therefore we're going to have two answers. Are we cool? Now, Diamond correctly identified something. She said, hey, look, do you see that negative 6? That's kind of what saved us. Because if we had 1 minus 4 times positive 6, which is 1 minus 24, that would be the discriminant is negative, and therefore we would get a problem. That negative 6 out on, on the A or the C kind of saved our butts. You see what I mean? All right. What about this one? What about the second problem? 3x squared <coughs> plus 12x plus 16 A and C are they positive numbers or ne you know are they uh, they're both positive so we're going to have B squared which is 144 minus 4 times 3 times 16 and since 3 and 16 are both positive numbers we could run into a problem here folks 4 times 3 times 16 diamond you're the one with the calculator if that's a number bigger than 144, we've got a problem. One ninety-two. So it's one forty-four minus one ninety-two. I don't really even need to calculate out what exactly it is, because what's the problem that we're running into with this problem? It would be a negative square root. If I were to graph that, three x squared plus twelve x minus sixteen, or plus sixteen. 3x squared plus 12x plus 16. Look where that graph is. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Look where that graph is. Where does it cross the x-axis, my friend? It doesn't. It doesn't. 
because there's a negative square root of or a square root of negative forty eight in there, which is a problem. <laughs> now this isn't always the case. Like let's try this one. A, B, and C. Now, Diamond, I feel like you're getting this. I want the twins. Tell me, is there going to be a, um, is there going to be two answers, or are there going to be no answers? There's going to be two answers. What do you think? He's wrong, by the way. I gave you two options. Is there two answers or no answers? And he got it wrong. He said there was two answers. So what's the answer? Why no? Well, look at the sign of A and C. Are they both positive? So we don't have that negative part saving us. You see what I mean by saving us with the negative part? So we're going to have 4 minus 4 times 1 times 3. So that'd be four minus twelve. Negative number. Square root of a negative number, no good. Does that make sense? <coughs> we good? All right. George? Yes. Two answers? No answers. Two answers. Why? Because there is a negative five. There's a negative five which kind of saves our butt because we have the negative one squared, which is one minus 4 times 1 times negative 5, that negative 5 and that minus 4 cancel out and make it positive 20. And then we're going to have a positive. Are we cool? So we're going to have two answers. I have, I have one more question for you, and I'm just going to make this problem up. Um... Okay, wait. X squared plus 4X plus, uh, hold on, I gotta think about it. I'm gonna put a 2 out in front here and a 2 out over here. I think that will work. Alright, tell me. 2x squared plus 4x plus 2. Would that give me one answer, or uh, two answers, or no answers? Diamond says none. Why, Diamond? And by the way, Diamond, you're your statement is correct. If A and C are both negative, it also doesn't work. See what I mean? We need one of them to be positive, one of them to be negative. But I'm trying a different problem out here. Am I going to have zero, zero answers, which no answers, or two answers? What do you think? Two or zero? You say two. Diamond says none. I, I mean, say zero. I say that's positive. positive. You say zero. Yeah. Why did you say two? You so say zero? I, yeah, so exactly. everyone says zero. Everyone says there is no answers that this thing is going to give us. Actually, I say there's two. All right. So you say there's two. You say there's two, and everyone else says there's none. Why don't we graph it? 2x squared plus 4 plus 2. How many answers are there? There's one. There's one. What's the deal? Did you guys try figuring out what the discriminant is, or you guys just looked at the signs? Look at this. B is gonna or the B squared minus four AC. That's just looking at the discriminant. That's not looking at the whole quadratic equation. Right? Right. If that number, if this number, whatever we get is a positive number, we're going to have two answers, right? If it's a negative number, we're going to have no answers. What is b squared? That's 16, right? Minus 4 times 2 times 2. What's 4 times 2 times 2? Yeah. 
16. So it's going to be the square root of 0. Wait, wait, wait. Let's plug this into the quadratic equation. Let's do the full quadratic equation. Negative b, which is negative 4, plus or minus the square root of... Well, we already know what the square root stuff is going to be. It's going to be 0. All over 2a, which is 4. Right? Uh, that's negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. The discriminant is 0. So that means it's not going to have a plus or minus. We're not going to have two answers now. We're just have one answer. Because you can't plus or minus 0. That doesn't do anything. It doesn't change anything. We cool? So your x axis, x intercept, is only going to be negative 1. So, because remember, remember, there's there's two different possibilities, there's three different possibilities for answers. You can either have two answers, you can have no answers, or you can have one answer. And the discriminant will tell us <sighs> all that information. If the discriminant, which is the b squared minus 4ac, that's the stuff inside the parabola, if that thing is a positive number, then we know that we're going to have two answers, right? If that thing is a negative number, then we know that we're not going to have any answers. But if that thing is zero, is zero a positive or negative number? It's neither. It's, it's, it's zero. It's not a positive. It's not a negative. So that's the third possibility. If it's zero, then how many answers are we going to have? We're going to have one answer. Because you still have the negative b, you know, you still have the negative b over 2a part. The plus or minus part, which is the square root, that got killed because you ended up with plus or minus 0. Does that make sense to you? I honestly feel like I've covered all of quad 9 in half an hour. Not even half, yeah, half an hour maybe. That's it. That's all of quad 9, I think. So I'm going to redo this exact lecture on Wednesday, and Diamond's going to come over to the lecture, and she's going to be a rock star in this one. You guys are going to be at pottery, making potter, potter, potting class. So I was going to say making pot, but that's not what you guys are doing in pottery that's class. Illegal. Yeah, Yeah, you guys aren't doing that. Um, but you guys are in pottery, and so you guys are going to be making pots. And uh, what is that? Isn't that stuff? Um. I guess you, no, you're in ceramics, right? Yeah. Okay, I see. So you guys are going to make statues. What are you guys doing in ceramics? Make, make We're wheel bowls. Oh, that's pretty cool. That, those are always fun. I love that. Anyway. Um, yeah. All right, so you guys won't be there, but you guys pretty much know Quad 9. Finish it. Got it? All right, talk to you guys later. See ya. See ya later.